What's going on? Today we're going to have an example to demonstrate if statements and jump instructions in assembly and C with RADAR2. We'll take an example file uh, using a try hack me lab and we will demonstrate the if statements and jump, instruction, uh, jump instructions both assembly and C and how to navigate the file with RADAR2. So basically in assembly or, or in general there are something called conditional statements. The conditional statements in assembly are different than in C, as you know. So technically, you would use the conditional statements to set an action if a condition is met, and set another action if a condition is not met. For example, you might see these uh, commands in assembly if you used to analyze code in assembly. So technically, you have the jump. Jump is an unconditional, uh, uh, you know, condition, not conditional statement. It's listed as a conditional statement, but actually it executes the instruction with no conditions. So it's not conditional. So whenever you see a jump in an assembly code, it means that it will jump to the address that's written right beside it to execute the command at that address. So JE, it will execute the command if the value is equal to zero. Similarly, JNE, e, it will execute the command if the value is not equal to zero or if not equal to something. JS, if the value is negative. JNS, if it's not negative. JG, it will execute if the value is greater than uh, a value. And here it will execute if it is greater or equal. L for less, the same and similarly with LE. JR and JB. So JA and JB is reserved only for um, signed integers. Unsigned, sorry. So if you have an unsigned integer, unsigned value, it, you can use JA or JB to compare values if it is above a specific value or below. Unsigned integers are always positive. There is no value. There is no sign, uh, which is the opposite of signed integers, which contains negative and positive using the tools complements in binaries. Now, we will use an example from TryHackMe to analyze a file and demonstrate how conditional statements work. But before doing that, let's analyze the methodology or understand how to analyze files with RADAR2. So basically, we use the first command, triple A. Triple A, this is the first command you would issue when you analyze a file. You want to radar to analyze the file, so this is your first command. PDF main will print the main function. In a, this is simple or, yeah, it's a simple the main function. So then you have the DR. DR is to display the register values. You want to know the register values before the execution of the program, and you want to monitor the, the values of the registers throughout the execution. Then you have DP. DP is used to set breakpoints. So if you want to suspend the or halt the program execution at some point and examine the uh, variables and arguments, you would use DP at the desired point. DC would continue the execution to the next instruction. So normally you would use DP and then DC along together uh, through your, throughout your analysis. PX is to print the value of a parameter. This would take one argument, which is the position of a parameter. Okay, enough talk. Let's jump right to the practice. So I'm using a material from TryHackMe, Advent of Cyber 1, uh, task 22, uh, day 22, task 27. And this is the given file. And the description is saying, Max Kitty has been faring on well so far with assembly. The they got some inside knowledge that the Christmas monster is weaponizing if statements. Can they get ahead of the curve? These programs have been compiled to be executed on Linux x86-64. Check out the material, you can check it out here. The questions below relate to the if2 binary. So once you install, uh, once you download the file, there will be a file called F2 binary, which you will need to analyze with radar or any uh, disassembler of your choice. The questions are, 
examining the value of the first variable local 8h and the second variable is local 4h. So let's examine the value of these variables and we will use the knowledge of if statements in C and jump comments in assembly to answer these questions. So first let's take a look at the files. So first we have, let me remove my board. Okay. So ls. So see we have if2, if1, c, and if1. So let's take a look at the nature of the first file if1. 64 bit executable file. The same with f2. And I guess it is self explanatory that if this file is c file. Let's examine the c file. So this is a C file, and it is clearly that the C file only contains if statements and return zero value. So as you can see, we have first variable called A equal 3, B equal 4, and the first if statement compares if A is less than B, which is actually true, A less than B. It, what it will do, it will increase the value of A by 5. So A, the value of A is now 3, it will become by adding 5, it will become 8. If the condition is not true, it will execute the else statement or the code within the else statement, which is increasing the b by 3. b will become 7. And then it will return 0. That is the C code. And let's see now the corresponding assembly code after compiling this file. So now we will start radar. Radar R2 dash D if 1. So as said earlier, first we analyze the file. And then we are interested in printing the main function or examining the main function. All right, now to examine or to monitor the values of the variables here throughout the execution, we have to set the breakpoints. Setting the breakpoints at locations where we know that the values of these variables are going to change. So the first breakpoint will be here. The second breakpoint will be here. So setting the breakpoint by issuing db. The next breakpoint is here. OK, now we type dc to launch the execution of the program line by line. You see now the program has executed and it started right from this line all the way till it encountered the first breakpoint here and it stopped. Now it is worth examining the values of these variables but we know beforehand that these variables are assigned to the values of 3 and 4 respectively. So now we type dc one more time to continue the execution of the program. In this case we know that the jump instruction here will not be or will not jump to that address. Why? Because the as you can see, it compares the value of VAX to the value in VAR for H. If it is greater than or equal, you know that the value of VAR for H is equal to 4. How about value of EAX? Let's examine the value of that register by typing TR to display the value of the registers. So the corresponding register in 64-bit systems to EAX is RAX. As you can see, the value is 3. And 3 is notably less than 4. So this one will not be executed. Now, if we type DC, the execution will go to the next line, which is here. It will add 5 to the var 8h. OK, now let's type DC. Uh, actually, I, sometimes I make mistakes between DC and DS. It's DC, right? So, as you can see, there is another breakpoint. So, what happens? Well, the program has executed this one, added 5 to var for 8h, and then it encountered the second breakpoint. Now, if we examine the value of var 8h, okay, we will see that it is equal to, it should be equal to 5 plus 3, which is 8. So we can examine the value by using the position of that variable. P 
px. So now it equal to 8. Okay. Now we are here. And this is unconditional jump. So it will jump to that address, which is here. So typing ds will perform that and go to that line. So these are the values 4 and 8. But guess what? These are the values for the first binary, which is if1. Now, this is an example, okay? You require to find the same values for the binary f2, if2. So we're going to exit out of here and type yes. Start with 2. Same process, triple A's. Mm -hmm. Invalid address from. Okay. All right, etf main. So you can, the same process goes here. Set breakpoints at this um, address, set a breakpoint here, and examine the values the same way with if1. Technically, the difference here is that this is, the statement here is different. So it is comparing if the value of ex is less than or equal to the value of var for h. And here is an unconditional jump to that address, which will freeze up the register EX. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just set one breakpoint at this address Y, because we require to find out the values before the end of the main function. And here it marks up the end. So we set a breakpoint here, and we execute breakpoint. OK, examine the values of the variables. So we have 9 and also ex for the other variable for so 9, 2. So technically here for 8h we have 9 and for local 4h we have 2. And that marks the end of this task. Okay. So I hope you found this information helpful and see you in the next.